Hey everyone, Big Mac here. I thought I would show you guys some cool tricks to do with MATLAB. So today I wanted to look at a uh, dynamical system of sorts and see uh, how it changes based on changing just a couple parameters. So up here I have a MATLAB M file. Uh, this is going to be our basic update rule. So we have a number X, which we're uh, closing between 0 and 1. And basically we're going to take X, our number X, multiply it by 1 minus x, and then multiply that by some coefficient. Uh, for now, I just have it up here set to be 1. Uh, just to do some interesting things, I said let's start at a random point between 0 and 1 uh, every time. And basically, I want this thing to go until, my, until I get either two points that are really, really close to each other, which means that we probably stop, that system would probably stop sometime soon, or we'll just see if it keeps going forever. So I have, I have a couple other lines in here which I will discuss later. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like for this situation. So again, n equals 1 for our first case, and we'll see what happens. So it looks like in this case what happened was we started around 0.33, uh, and then our next uh, value will can do about 2.24 or something. So going back down here to point two whatever, uh, we do we evaluate again using our function. It takes us to point one seven maybe. So then we come back to this point and basically uh, we're following this entire trail all the way down in this direction. It looks like it's going to stop at uh, point zero zero, which makes a lot of sense because if we look back at our update rule over here, um, if we plug in zero will get zero in our output. So that's actually what's called a fixed point. So it looks like zero, zero is a fixed point for this case. Um, but what if the, what if our uh, initial point was further away? Uh, could that make a difference? Let's find out. So this one still looks like it's going. Let me just quit it really quickly. Uh, Repull up our graph. And let's start this again. All right, so there it starts going again. Uh, it looks like this time our initial point wound up over here around 0.6, which gave us a y value of 0.23. So again, we got stuck on this left half, on this left side of the picture, and we basically start again our trail going downwards towards zero. So it looks like regardless of where we start our graph, the point zero, zero is going to become a fixed point. So that's not very interesting. So let's quit that one really quickly. Pull up a graph again. And let's change this value of n to 1.5. Click run and see what happens. Okay, so now it's not going down to zero anymore. It looks like it stopped somewhere else. Um, <coughs> by the looks of it, it looks like this uh, graph came up here and stopped at about 0.33, so maybe one-third, and the y-coordinate one-third, which makes sense, because if one-third, one-third is a fixed point, then we should be able to plug in uh, into our function here. So we have 1.5, which is three-halves, times one-third, so that's uh, one-half, times one minus one-third, or two-thirds, so one-half times two-third is one-third. So if we plug in one-third, we'll get exactly one-third back out. So again, let's uh, try changing our initial uh, data point here. And it looks like every time we're going to end up at around this point, one-third, one-third point. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's change our value of n to 2, see what happens. OK, that was very sudden. Um, it looks like up here we have two points at around 0.5 and 0.5. Again, that makes sense as a fixed point because if we plug in 0.5 here now, we'll have 2 as n times 1 half times 1 half. So we'll just get 0.5 back out. Um, this initial point, it looks like it happened to be really close to 0.5, so let's try deviating that a little bit. Um, yeah, this one started way out here at 0.7 and is still went to 0.5. Uh, wow, this one even started by 0 0.9 and went to 0 0.2, and then from 0 0.2 it came back up to 0 0.5.5. Uh, so the other thing I like to notice on, on this one is how quickly it goes to that point. You know, 
It seemed to do it very quickly, so let's change our value of n again to 2.5. See what happens now. Okay. Uh, again, it looks like we're going to have this converging point up here at around maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And it looks like this is our initial point, or our original starting point, almost at 1. So our y value was 0.1, so our new, this becomes our new one. And we looks like we follow this trail up this way. Interesting. Let's uh, try with a couple more points and see what happens. That one started really close and again came out to about 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And it looks like that keeps happening for different graphs. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's go to n equals 3 and see what happens. Okay. So it looks like we started down here at 0.1 or 0.15 maybe. And it looks like it's getting over here now, and it looks like it's trying to get to some point here in the middle, which would be about 0.67, so two-thirds, and yeah, about two-thirds, two-thirds, which if we plug into our original formula over here, we get three times two-thirds times one-third, which is two-thirds. So yeah, so two-thirds, two-thirds is the fixed point over here, but one thing to notice is that it is converging there very, very slowly. So I'm not going to wait for it to, but it looks like, it definitely looks like that is the stable point for this problem. Let's uh, quit it and let's run it again just to see if we have the same behavior. Um, yep, it looks like we're definitely getting the same type of converging behavior. What I have here is I'm drawing a line between uh, my next two, my two points in the graph as I develop them. So there, as you can see, there's always a straight line right here. So you can tell that uh, these things are converging. It keeps going back and forth, back and forth, until we're going to hopefully converge around this two-thirds, two-thirds point. Very interesting. Uh, let me just do a couple more examples with you guys. Um, 3.5. Oops, pull up our graph. And then let's see what happens. Let's see what it converges to this time. It's Okay, that's pretty interesting. It doesn't seem to want to converge to one particular point. But rather, it seems to be bouncing around between, it looks like, four, yeah, four points. So if we start at this point at like point eight eight, and then go to point four, so we follow that one up here, a uh, new value of about point eight two brings us back to this point, uh, takes us to a uh, value of 0.5, which brings us back up to here, which brings us back to our 0.88 again. So basically we have a cycle, in this case, of four points. So it goes this one to, which one is in it? This one to this one to this one to this one. And we can see that with the, uh, the lines that are connecting the two points here. So that just shows that these functions don't always have one distinct point that they uh, converge to. So in this case we have 4. last example I wanted to show you guys was if we set n equal to 4. Save that really quick. Let's quit this 3.5 program. And let's start again. Oh my. Oh my. It definitely looks like there is not a fixed point for this case. Um, it might be possible and in fact, there is no fixed point other than the point zero zero, because basically, if you start at zero, obviously going back over here, it'll go toward, it'll stay at zero. But it might this uh, program might stop prematurely if it gets to a point that's ridiculously close to zero, just because of how I set up this uh, program. I could probably do that a little better. But basically, as you can see here, we are covering the entire parabola without any notion of recurrence or patterns or anything. So this is definitely very chaotic behavior. Uh, essentially what's happening is that if we have a point that's down here, it will increase into a region about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Then it'll come over here. And then based on the slope of everything, it'll start decrease. It'll uh, head towards this direction. In which case, now that the y values are negative, it sh shoves it all the way back over here again. So basically we have this never-ending cycle, but 
seeing as how spread out these points are, there is no distinct pattern either. So this is definitely an introduction to chaotic behavior. Um, so just thought you guys would find this kind of stuff pretty interesting. Uh, so let me stop there. Let me do one more example with you guys really quickly. Um, you guys might have noticed in here I had a function called mod. Uh, basically that just means take everything modules one. And basically what, what that means in practical terms is get rid of everything before the decimal point. So if you had like 1.5 as your answer, basically that just means convert it to 0.5. So what I'm going to do really quickly here is I'm going to change my value of n to 8. And let's see what happens. Again, we have this very uh, chaotic behavior here. Um, and at first it looks like it's all distinct points or all different points, but uh, now that we let more points assemble as time's gone by, as time has gone by, we can just see it as a distinct pattern here. Um, basically, what this mod one function did was it uh, truncated this parabola here and placed it all in this one t uh, zero to one zero to one graph. So in this case, uh, here would be our function going from 0 to 1 originally. And then this would be the part that would have originally y values of 1 to 2. And then it would start to come back down. It meets back up again here. And we uh, can decrease our parabola back down to the point 0. So again, I, this one doesn't seem to have any kind of stable or periodic behavior either. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys some interesting stuff that I've been doing in my math classes lately. Um, I could try and go into the theory behind this chaotic system a little bit, but eh, that's a little technical. Alright, Big Mac saying, later.